Hit the stage in about 40 minutes or so from now, but let's start with kind of the news of the day, right? The news on the transgender rights rollback. I want to get your take broadly on this. I know that this, uh, when the North Carolina bathroom bill was happening, this was something that Heritage had come out against. Uh, what's your reaction to the Trump administration's latest move? Well, it's it's a common sense thing to push these kind of decisions back to the states, so that the the states and the local communities, schools can act in the best interest of the people there. That's not the kind of decision that needs to be made in the White House. So I certainly agree that Trump should basically repeal what President Obama did and send these kind of decisions back to the states. And that is a line to uh, Senator that we have heard from the White House, from the president himself, that this is a state's issue. But what happens, let's say, if a transgender student moves from maybe San Francisco to Dallas, a place where there are explicit protections, to a place where there's not? Why shouldn't the government protect some of these vulnerable students? Well, a number of laws change as you move from state to state, but I, I'm convinced that the, the states will make accommodations for folks and not discriminate against them. But we need to use some common sense here and think of the security of, of children in a school situation or, or women or girls. And I think that states can do this in a very common sense way that doesn't discriminate against anyone. What do you make of the town halls we've been playing all across the country, the anger from constituents? What's the message Republicans should be taking back to Washington? Well, there are some le legitimate concerns there always are, but most of these protests, as we've checked into it, are very well organized and financed, uh, unfortunately, by Obama's Organizing for America, George Soros, Indivisible. Uh, we've seen their manuals. We know they're busing people in to disrupt these town halls. And, and what we see here is that the left is really protesting the election and the man that Americans elected in that election. It's very much very different than the Tea Party where they were protesting policies. They were protesting bailouts and Dodd-Frank and excessive spending and debt. So uh, I think this is just um, mostly just an organized astroturf type of uh, protest. So let's, it, it is organized, right? But Senator Tom Cotton, for example, worked with one of the groups organizing it to make sure that he put on this town hall. He said to his constituents last night, sure, you may be organized, but it doesn't mean you're still not voters in his state. Is he wrong? What, well, uh, certainly, uh, all these concerns will be listened to, but many of these protesters are actually being bussed in from out of state. Uh, we can't quantify that, obviously. We, we don't know, but the ones, many of them have spoken of it. So we need to listen to the concerns. All the congressmen and senators do, uh, but the evidence is that they're trying to disrupt the, these meetings rather than actually contribute and convince a congressman or a senator to uh, carry out uh, their ideas. You heard some of these folks uh, over the last several days as Congress has been on recess demanding answers, particularly when it comes to the health care law. I had your uh, fellow South Carolinian on earlier this week, uh, Mark Sanford. Uh, he was on our network saying that he thought Obamacare could be repealed and replaced, or at least repealed, within the next couple of months. Is that realistic? And do you understand sort of the anxiety of some of the folks who are coming out to these auditoriums asking about the health care law, given this timeline and given what they're seeing happening in Washington? Well, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions here because America had the best health care system in the world before Obamacare. We don't need to replace that system. Obamacare is a cancer on that system we need to remove. And then there are a number of things we need to do to improve our health care system so that it works for everyone, so everyone can buy a health plan they can afford and keep. So we need to repeal it first. Otherwise, we can't begin to work on the improvements that are needed. So that's the first step of Congress. I'm I'm frankly very disappointed they didn't move quickly after the inauguration hmm. to send President Trump a bill that they had already passed before. So you wanted to see faster action on that? Excuse me? You wanted to see faster action. You wish it had been done already, it sounds like you're saying. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, well certainly, um, there's a, they've, they've already pa passed a bill. They need to send the same bill that repeals Obamacare to the president and begin work on improving our system. 
I know you have to run backstage to get ready for your speech to CPAC in just about 30 minutes from now. So I want to ask, what is the message that you are hoping to send here, Senator? I think, you know, one of the tensions that we've been seeing at this as we look ahead to CPAC has been, you know, I think two years ago, Donald Trump got on that stage and had some fairly feisty things to say against the Republican movement and against where Republicanism was going. Now he's the president. Kellyanne Conway says it's TPAC, right? T for, for Trump. How do you try to reconcile these different wings of the party and a CPAC the venue to do that in? What you see here at CPAC is a lot of unity around core ideas, and my message is just going to be remind uh, the president, remind Congress, the Republicans in Congress, they made a lot of promises to the American people to secure our borders, to repeal Obamacare, to drain the swamp and get rid of uh, crony uh, programs like the Export Import Bank. We just need to keep our promises and not blow it like we did back during the Bush years where Republicans made a whole lot of promises and they didn't follow through. Former Senator Jim DeMint, thank you so much for joining us here this hour. Appreciate it. Coming